Let me stop playing. <laughs> Man, I'm too fat for this shirt right now. I got too big. Don't worry about it. I'm getting it right. This is my bus life shirt. Mindset like a runner. Hit the wall and keep running. Some of you going to hit a straw and fall the fuck out. But anyway, working on getting my body back right. I look good for an almost 40-year-old that wake up with free throat thoughts. But let me sip me a little bit of this wine because somebody asked me something that I thought was very interesting. They asked me, do I miss the NBA? So I said, let me think about that. As I get prepared to go out and watch some football games, because I'm gonna watch the football game today. And uh, let me promote cake breads in case they want to get send me a check. I like this. If y'all want to get a good bottle of wine, go to Florida and get it. It's cheaper. If you can find it wholesale, it's an awesome bottle of wine. What's going on, Bonnie? Let me get me a little sip. Ooh, that smells good. So, um, <clears throat> the question was asked <clears throat> to me, do I miss the NBA? And I said, at first, my greedy mind went right to hell yeah, because I was thinking about the money. I missed the money. But then I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. let me think about this shit. Let me think about it. Because although I don't have the money that I made or I'm not making the money that I made, I am actually, I feel my homeboy. <laughs> But anyway, let me start over, unless I got to start the live over. But uh, uh, I was asked, did I miss the NBA? And like I said, initially, I thought, fuck yeah, because I'm thinking about the money. And I'm thinking about now with this brain, what I would do with that residual income every two weeks. And I'm like, hell yeah. But then I'm like, let me think about this for a second. And as I thought about it, I would have to say no. Uh, so much of my life has been committed and dedicated to a game. You know, I've had sons, I've had boys. I got a boy upstairs now, he's 16 years old. So much of my life I wrestled and struggled and fought with his mother and begged for time. Uh, and although I made a lot of money, but to me, I'm a man. I want to see my boy like his daddy. I'm an independent thinker. So um, although other people might think money and everything else brings them happiness, I've had the pleasure, I've had the unfortunate opportunity to realize that it doesn't. And that the fame and all this stuff that most of you guys are beating down the doors to go get, once you get it, you're going to be like your celebrities. You're going to be on Adderall. You're going to be on Molly Percocet. Molly Percocet. You're going to lose your mind because they've figured out a way to separate the room where they make celebrities seem like they're above you and then they turn grown men into babies. If one of you run into Jay-Z right now and he's walking by himself and he's walking with his wife and you call Beyonce a bad word, and he's a man, he's designed to do what he's supposed to do, which will protect his wife. If he slapped the side of your face, do you know that there's guys out there that would do that? There's guys out there, there's laws in place that turn Jay-Z into less of a man because of his success, because of his money. See, this world is all about money. Y'all keep thinking it's black and white, it's all about money. Jay-Z is a grown man who still have rights, who pay high taxes, who has a wife that if he walk by himself and a man antagonize him and he do what a man is supposed to do and he slap the side of his face, Jay-Z will get sued for millions. 
and y'all will let them do it. See, I think it's all about envy and jealousy because we all know this world is about money. My whole life, people have been envy and jealous of me. So I have to decline and say, hell no, I don't miss the NBA. People don't see salaries in the paper that is going to be coming to me. And now when I walk into a restaurant or a bar or a club, I don't have women scheming trying to sleep with me to have a baby that they're going to hold over my head and pretend like I'm a bad daddy because if I make the mistake or the condom break, and bitch, I didn't even know you. So how the hell can I love this child when it wasn't even a love child? So do I miss the NBA? Hell no. I'm a man. I'm a free man. I wake up when I want. If I don't want to leave the house, I don't. If I want to go on a vacation, I go. I'm a free man, finally. And let's get into this. Especially this woke, this quote-unquote woke NBA. Imagine, all of you think NBA players are rich. I understand that they're not. I understand that there's a lot of these players, we're talking about Wakanda, right? We're talking all this pro-black shit, but none of them are doing business together. None of them. All of them take their money and give it to white men with degrees and say, hey, help me because I'm black and you're white. So, you know, because you have an education. So make money for me. And when it doesn't happen and they put gag orders in place, some people cry and blame white people. But see, this is why they don't teach you about money in school. This is why you can make all the money you want. They let you rap. They let you sing. They let you dance. They let you shoot. They let you do all these things that got a lifespan of four, five years. Because they know you're going to come back and need them. They know you don't know how to make no money, even when you get it. So in this woke NBA, I want white folks to pay attention. I want you to listen. I know some of you are so gung-ho about the flag and, oh, God damn it, if he don't stand for the flag, I'm going to kill him. He ain't shit. Fuck him. I want you to take time to listen for a second. Imagine the black guy who understands that if he make one mistake, he gets kicked out the black community. Now, imagine the black guy who... Because everybody think NBA players are rich. Imagine a black guy who signs for a 10-day contract right before the playoffs start. Somebody got hurt. They're in the bubble. Or they're out the bubble. But now we're woke. This guy signs for a 10-day contract. He has two children and a girl to take care of. He's the last guy on the bench. He's busting his motherfucking ass. He don't get the money of LeBron James. Now imagine this black guy and LeBron vouch for him. Imagine he go to the Lakers. Mr. Woke himself, LeBron. Imagine this guy that's on a 10-day contract and he need every bit of this money as the playoffs go on because he has children. He been fighting, he been scratching to make it to this 1%. He's been doing everything right. He's never been drafted. He's never, he went to a D3 school, but he bust his ass and he got somewhere. He got to the NBA, Politic and Control Central number one. He got there. So now this young man is on the Lakers. LeBron stands up in the meeting as the leader of the team. He say, we all going to kneel for the fucking flag. Imagine this young man having police officers in his family. Imagine this black young man having military members in his family. Imagine this black young man not agreeing with LeBron. Imagine him wanting to stand up. Then imagine him with two kids and a girl that helped him out, helped him get shoes, worked that nursing job who helped this young man when he didn't have a job and he was just going to practice. Imagine him not kneeling down, 
taking that contract away from his family. Because LeBron, let me tell you, I don't want to bash the brother, but LeBron going to be looking at him like this. <laughs> oh, nigga. Nigga, shoot program, nigga. You just disobeyed the king, motherfucker? 23 and 1. 24, what is it? 23 and 1, nigga. You, feel, you disobeyed the king? Because he calls himself the king, right? See? You don't understand the politics and the pressure of these young men. All of these young men don't want to take a knee. These black young men, you, you, you white guys or you white men that are judging them as a whole, think about it. Think about what it would happen if somebody black put out a phone on your ass and make you seem racist. Because this word racist control all you motherfuckers. And this word coon and sellout choke control most of us motherfuckers. So imagine this guy being on a team where he just, he finally got his lucky break. He finally got a 10-day contract and some guy was hurt that was on a roster. He now can maybe get to a team next year in the league or he may be able to get to the Mecca, China. China is the next best league to the NBA that pay the most money. So he need that Laker resume. He need that vouch. So what does he do? He take a fucking knee. And then you all judge him. You all bash him. You all call him all the same thing. You all tell him to shut the fuck up and dribble. But he's trying to take care of his family. Now, here's why I have a problem with young man LeBron. See, and I, want, I don't want to bash the brother because I think we all do that. But I think he's buying into some bullshit he really don't understand. See, what I've learned in being out here in the real world is that there's always somebody black to keep other niggas in line. See, white folks put another black person up that everybody like to keep every other nigga in check. Because, see... If this brother LeBron was a true leader and a true king, then what he would have said to this young brother that is trying to feed his black daughter, because everybody want to talk about black women and black this until they don't align with what the fuck you saying. Then his black daughter don't matter to you. Then his black life don't matter to you because you will label him something. You will call him a fucking name and then his whole life is ruined and you wouldn't give a fuck. Because white people told you to. So if brother LeBron was a true king. Like this shit he buying into. Because he being a puppet really. And no disrespect sir. Because your life and my life. Shows you why America is great. Two young men with no college degrees. That made a million dollars. You building a 40 million dollar house. But yet and still you teaching young boys they can't. So if you, Brother LeBron, was a true and good leader, you would understand that it's still a black agenda if that's what you're trying to push. And you would not take food out that young man's mouth because he's doing something that's opposite of you. You know what you would do? You would say, you know what? Colin Kaepernick started this kneeling thing because he was trying to bring awareness to the black to get white people to understand and bring awareness to police brutality. And he took a knee out of respect and he didn't want nobody to find disrespect in that. He wanted people to respect his right to do so. So if you're a true leader, LeBron, then guess what you would have said when everybody else talked about that young brother and everybody else would go crazy. You would bring people together because a leader and a king understands you're not nothing without the people without the village for you to rule over. If you by yourself saying, I'm the king, I'm the king, who the fuck you be talking to? So you got to take care of the people. So just like Colin Kaepernick had the right to kneel, then somebody else have a right to stand. So you wouldn't allow a persecution of a man who decided to stand in respect because his beliefs didn't align with yours. You would still protect his right because you want your rights protected. So in this woke NBA, do, especially this woke NBA, do I miss it? 
Hail to the no. They are using athletes. They're using the black vote. They're getting us emotional. They're using our quote unquote leaders that barely know anything about voting. Look at it. They ain't even going to vote, but they're telling you to vote. They ain't even registered to vote, but every goddamn day they're acting like they're so political. Who's pulling their puppet strings? You guys got to start seeing this shit for what it is. And I'm trying to say it in the humblest way I can. I'm not trying to bash another brother because I truly think LeBron is being used and all of our celebrities are being used. But if you feel what you feel, then keep it towards you. I don't think that we should be using our job platform into talking about politics and doing whatever it is you want to do. Because I've had jobs outside of the NBA and you can't do whatever you want to do. And the one thing I'm going to tell you NBA players, you current NBA players, here's what you don't know. You don't know a lot about real life. Here's what I didn't know. A lot about fucking real life. See, they tell you to shut up and dribble for so long and I don't agree with that. You need to be moving and shaking with real people that's making money out here, that's making the same money as you and some of you more money than you. You need to be moving and shaking with these people so you can understand the exit plan after you're done playing. Because here's what's going to happen. Real life is going to hit you. And when the light ain't on you no more, nobody don't give a fuck how tall you is. Nobody don't give a fuck how many shots you used to shoot. They want to know how much you shot now. They want to know what do you do now. And a lot of you don't know how to do nothing. I know I didn't. When I got out of the NBA, I said, oh, shit. There's no more walking through, tearing up your knee, and then going straight through to an MRI. You can go from the game to an MRI machine to a surgery. If you do that, you go to the park and you fuck your knee up, you got to wait in the waiting room with your knee fucked up. You just like everybody else. That reality hits you right in your fucking nose. I never waited on an MRI. I never waited on a, a, a anything. We, we go straight to the line. We walk all through the people. Hey, guys, regular people, whatever. Not to say it in any disrespect, but that's how you kind of feel. We got to go do a physical. We walk all through. There's hundreds of people in the hospital. We walk straight through. So a lot of these guys don't understand reality. And a lot of these guys, reality is going to slap them right in the goddamn face. If you call yourself a leader and you're not trying to pull people together at the end of the day, if you're not saying it's racist, but despite of we're going to push through because there's only a small sector of racism because we can hold our phone up to somebody white right now and they'll be fired and canceled from life. So it's not like back in the day. So let's not pretend. Let's move forward in our thinking. Let's stop listening to our so-called leaders that's building 40 and 50 million dollar houses. If they can fucking do it, you can do it. This is the only place in the world without a college degree you can make a million dollars. This man without a college degree is building a $30 million house. My house is 15,000 square foot. I don't got a college degree, but I got me. Mindset. Remember that. We have to put skills training back in these high schools. Everybody is not built for college. We have to put etiquette school back into these high schools. We have to put something about taxes into these high schools. We have to put something about business management into these high schools. Otherwise, we're only using high schools to indoctrinate our youth. Because learning about a cotton gin and learning about things that happened years and years ago is not going to help you now. The things that will help us now is taxes, learning how to build, learning a trade, learning economics, learning anything that has something to do with current affairs right 
now. It needs to be added to our curriculum in high school. Fuck waiting to get to college. If you're saying education is so important and you love the kids, it needs to be an all-out movement towards putting real things in high school classes. Hell, elementary. If you're saying kids learn the most at a young age, if they start learning about taxes, if they start learning about STEM and coding in elementary, then we'll have a better, more smarter society. But I don't think we want that. Let me see, because I know my answer is long and drawn out, but I think it just needs to be said because I'm so sick of our celebrities indoctrinating our youth. If we can turn a stripper into talking to the president, a presidential candidate, then anything is possible. If a kid can go from the hood with no shoes on to the number one draft pick, then anything is possible. Let's live by these examples. Let's stop telling these kids this weak shit. You're going to create a generation of people who don't try, who blame and victimize and burn down fucking buildings. We should not allow the media to be on TV if this is the shit they're going to pump. Us as Americans, it's we the people. We should tell CNN and all these stations to close. We don't want our kids hearing this shit. Because how you make a kid not try is to tell them there's no purpose and there's no reason to. And that's what we're doing. If I had a thought like that with no shoes on my feet, are you kidding me? I was always trying to figure out how to solve the problem. I can't, you can't keep telling me negative shit. Oh man, you ain't got no shoes, boy. You gonna get blisters. If something can bite your feet. I mean, goddamn, you can stub your toe. Your toenails can come off. Get the fuck away from me. Here's what I'm thinking. I see a dude at the park with shoes on. I'm gonna challenge his ass in a one-on-one -on -one game while I got no shoes on. And I pray to God his ego make him think that this shoe is a, these no shoes are a handicap. Because that's when I'm going to tear his ass up. And that's what happened. And I left the park with shoes. So things are going to happen to you in this thing called America. Things are going to happen to you wherever the fuck you move. Wherever the fuck you go. There's going to be people that have a difference of opinion. You can't cut off the conversation by racism. Celebrities, use your celebrity for something else other than pandering to people. You got to where you was going by busting your goddamn ass. That's the long and short of it. You dedicate yourself, you put your fucking mind to something, and you bust your ass. You fall short. You aim higher than the goal that you think you can do. You shoot for the fucking moon, the stars, and past that. And wherever you fall short is better than where your ass would have got to if you just sat on the couch. Now, I love y'all. I respect y'all. Now, I got to get out here and watch some damn football. So, y'all have a blessed day. Go on.